Good afternoon, everyone. This is Bremster, and today I'm coming to you with a puzzle by me. And there's a couple of reasons I'm doing this. First, this is a puzzle I said about a month ago, and it's probably the puzzle that I've had the most feedback on, that it is probably one of the most difficult puzzles I've ever set. There are some tricks in this puzzle that are not obvious, um, to the point that when I sat down to look at this puzzle again a few days ago, I actually struggled with it. Um, the other reason I'm bringing this puzzle to you is because at the moment my puzzle adventure save the galaxy is going on and i kind of want people to jump over and do that if you haven't already and i don't want other setters to think that i'm uh, sort of having people come to my video and the first thing i'm saying is go do something else so i know that i won't get upset if you come to this video and then go do something else. I think this is a really good puzzle and there will be a link to the puzzle below, but also below there will be a link to the Save the Galaxy puzzle adventure, which has nine puzzles in it and I think is absolutely great. Um, all of the puzzles in the Save the Galaxy puzzle adventure are approachable-ish. Um, they've not designed to be brutally hard. Um, this puzzle is by the Ironworks. This puzzle that I'm going to do today is definitely harder than any of the puzzles in Save the Galaxy. So if you want to watch me um, how, or present how to solve Ironworks, feel free to watch this video. If you want to solve some amazing puzzles, go do Save the Galaxy. Then come back and watch this. Um, please. I mean, I, I would love the views. Give, a, give this a thumbs up. Um, please subscribe if you're not. All of the normal YouTube stuff. But um, yeah, Saving the Galaxy is, is absolutely something that you uh, could and should be doing, in my opinion. With the people who've put work into those puzzles, they are really good. But this, Ironworks. So... This is a puzzle, as I said, I set this about a month ago, and this broke some of my testers. Um, some of them could not solve it. Um, some amazing setters, and I don't want to call out names because I don't want to make them feel bad, but some amazing setters got back to me going, I've spent an hour on this and I can't place more than a few digits. Yeah, um, this puzzle... Uh, People either get it or they don't, um, and I'm here to show you how to get it. Um, I hope, because when I test solved this, as I said a while ago, I'd forgotten the tricks and I didn't get it, <laughs> even though I set it and I, I should have taken notes. So um, let's give this a shot. Well, I shouldn't say that yet. Stop, Bremster, you're getting ahead of yourself. Um, ironworks. There's only two rule or three rules in ironworks. So normal Sudoku rules apply. In every box, in every row, and in every column, the digits one to nine must be placed without repetition. We have killer cages. So within these cages, the digits that you place in the cages will sum to the digit in the top left corner of the cage. Down here in box six, there is a 15 that has been placed in the top center corner of the cage. And the reason is when I place this in the top left corner of the cage on some people's screens, it was hidden behind the this um, quadruple clue. So I've moved the clue so that it is in a different position, but this 15 refers to this cage. Um, and finally, quadruple clues, which is where there are digits in a circle, those digits must be placed somewhere in the four cells around that circle, um, at least once, maybe more than once, but at least once um, in the uh, digits around that circle. That's what we've got to go on to solve this puzzle. Um, and now I'm going to try and show you what I hope is the most efficient way to do this, if I can remember. Now, let's give this a shot. So the first thing that I kind of wanted people to notice um, is this is an eye bar <laughs> in the middle of the puzzle. Um, this is a nine cell cage. It does not have a total. Um, and I should have said we're given in the rules. I didn't. Um, but this is a nine cell cage, so it must contain all of the digits from one to nine because digits cannot repeat within a cage. So this will total 45. Um, I, this is basically an extra region. Um, and this will interact very, very heavily with these 
quadruple clues. Now, a lot of people are drawn to these 11 cages and the fact that there are five sixes. And I am going to give a deduction about that right now because a lot of people are drawn to it. But this is completely separate to the I bar. If you think about these five sixes, if you place a five or a six into an 11 cage, you must place the other one. So if you place a five or a six here, then the five or a six goes here. So either, um, and if you don't, so if you place a five or a six here, you can't then place a five or a six down here, or you will have to place the other one in here as well. So either the fives and the sixes will be here or here, and the same is true here. The five, six will either be in these two cells or in these two cells. You can't break them up in any other way. But back to this I bar, which is where I really wanted people to focus first, although they often get drawn into these five, six cages, which I wanted to point out. So if you notice, these quadruple clues have two ones, three twos, and three threes in them. Um, and there's a couple of different ways of deducing this, but I'm going to point out what I think is the smoothest way of doing it, which is... Let's look at these clues in unison and ask ourselves about these two cells because the twos in these columns must be in here. But so what we want to ask ourselves is how can we fulfill the two in this clue? If we put a two here, then in order to fulfill a two in this clue, we can't put it here or here. It must go in one of those two which puts a 2 into the uh, into the I bar. Now, with a 2 in the I bar, we cannot put a 2 in any of those cells, and with a 2 in, the, in box 5 already, we can't put a 2 there. So we could not fulfill this clue if we put a 2 there. If we put a 2 here on this quadruple clue, so if we put it in that cell, then in order to fulfill this clue, we can't put another one in the I bar, so we would have to put it there. And this clue has exactly the same problem. We've already got one in the I bar, so we can't put it in those three cells. And there's already one in box five, so we can't put it there. We cannot fulfill that clue. So it must go in one of those two cells. So once it goes in one of those two cells, we cannot put it in the I bar, so that becomes the two. Once that becomes the two, there's already a two in box five, and that becomes the two. And we get two twos straight away. It's now even easier. We could have started with the threes and done exactly the same logic working with these threes and asking where three goes in these. But now it's even easier because where do we put the three in this clue? If we put it there, then the three must go there. And now there is nowhere to put a three around this clue. So the three must go in one of those two. Once the three goes in one of those two for, for this clue, then it can only go there for this clue. That can no longer be a three. That becomes a three. And you get the twos and threes for all of these clues straight away. We can then ask questions about ones. We need to put ones around those um, uh, around those quadruple clues somewhere. But four of those cells are within the I-beam and only two of them aren't. So one of the ones is going to have to go outside the I-beam. So they become ones, which means they are not ones and the ones are going to have to go in those positions. So one of them is going to be in one of those positions, and depending on which one it is, the other one will go in the opposite corner I-beam. So you end up with this weird bent X-wing of ones. So it'll either be here and here, or here and here for ones. And that's what you can get with this I-beam and those quadruple clues in the middle. And that's what I thought the initial break-in for this puzzle was. And most people had no problem with that. The next bit is where people absolutely lost their minds. And I have to hope I can do this. Because, wow. So the next question that I want people to ask is about these cages. Because if we look at those cages together... Every cell in those cages sees each other. So both of the cells in this 11 cage see every cell in this 27 cage. 
So there, and every cell in this 27 cage sees this 11 cage. So what that means is effectively, this is one giant eight cell 38 cage. Because if I put a digit here, I cannot put it in the 27 cage. If I put a digit here, I cannot put it in the 27 cage. So all of these digits must be different and they must sum to 38. So somewhere in here, basically the question is now, where can I put seven in this box? Because if I put seven anywhere in here, I've basically broken that 38 cage I've just created because I've got an eight cell 38 cage and the big, um, if I made it a nine cage, nine cell cage, it would have to sum to 45, all of the digits from one to nine sum to 45. So I cannot put a seven in this cage. So seven must go in one of those two cells. That is tricky to see. I admit that is tricky to see, but that was the trick that I wanted people to spot next. But we've got these seven, that seven, eight quadruple. So we know that the seven must go there. It cannot go down here because the seven has to go in one of those four cells. Over this side, we can do the same trick, but it's not as powerful. We've got a 25 and 11. So this becomes 36. So we've got an, these eight cells cannot contain a nine and a nine has to go in one of those two cells. This is a seven in a 15 cage. So these have to sum to eight. I can't use one seven. I can't use two six. So these must be three five because there's only three ways to make an eight. I've already used the seven and I can't use the two because of the two from the I-beam logic. So this becomes a three five. Now the question I can ask myself is, can that be a nine? And the answer is no, because if this is a nine, I have to put six in here. And the only ways to make six are one five, I can't use a five, two four, can't use a two, and that's it. So I can't use six in here if this is a nine. So this is the nine, this is not the nine. So there's a couple of different ways from, of progressing from here, but the easiest way I always thought of doing it was this. I now have to put a seven and an eight in that quadruple clue. But I can't put them both in there. That doesn't work because seven and eight sum to 15, not 11. So I can only put one of them in there and I can't put none of them in there because if I put none of them in there, then I have to make this cell here both seven and eight, which doesn't work. So this has to be seven and eight, and this will either be eight, three or four, seven. That's the only possibility for that cage. I have not, neither of those are five, six. So this becomes five, six. And I know where the five, six is in this box. Now, uh, this is where things start getting a little bit tricky. Um, I must put a two in here and I must put a one in here. And that's just the logic of a 25 cage. So if I pull up the possible digits that can go in a 25 cage, all of them require a one and a two. And if I remove so there must be a one or a two in here and I can't put the two down here. So one goes in here, two goes in here, but there is a step I am missing. And I'm trying to remember what it is. What is the step I am missing? That's the step I am missing. What is that cell? So this cell right here 
Remember, this is a 25 cage. This cell right here has to either be that cell or that cell, because remember that these um, all, uh, basically, uh, um, this cell sees all of those cells by either the nature of the killer cages or being in the same row. So this can only be five, six, or nine. Now, if this is nine, what happens to this 25 cage? Well, the minute I have a nine in a 25 cage, I cannot have a seven and an eight in a 25 cage. So this cannot be a nine, this becomes a five, six. And now I can start coloring fives and sixes. So let's call this one blue, this one green. This one becomes green because it must be different to the blue one because it's in the same cage. Now, we have a five and a six in this 25 cage. So any 25 cage that doesn't include a five and a six goes away. Okay, now, this 11 cage now, by the fact that this is forced to be a five or a six, cannot be a five or a six. Because if, remember, if I put a five or a six in here, I have to put both. And if I put both in here, I couldn't put anything in that cell. So this cannot be five, six. So what can it be? Well, it can be two, nine. It can be three, eight. It can't be four, seven. And it can't be five, six. But again, I have not put five, six into this quadruple clue. So this now is five, six. This now becomes five, six, or seven. And we know that whichever one this is, is going to be blue. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think next is the nature of a 27 cage, but I'm not sure. Please send help. Please send help. Please send help. Okay, so that's the horror of being in the middle of explaining something a little bit tricky when something very expensive in your house is broken by a cat. So I've rolled back a little bit to, the, uh, to a point where I hadn't yet started explaining it, and now I'm going to try it again. So, what we want to look at now is this 27 cage and ask ourselves what is possible in this 27 cage. So we've got a 5, a 6 and a 5, 6, 7. So we can immediately eliminate some of the options. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, not possible um, because we need to put a 5, a 6 or a 7 in there. Um, now, we also know that we have to put a 1 or a 4 in here because there's no 1 or a 4 elsewhere in the cage. So we can immediately remove any option that doesn't include both a 1 and a 4. So 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9 goes away. 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8 goes away. So this leaves us with two options. Now, the one we want to look at is the one that gives us a 7 here. So... Um, there's only one option left out of the three that are left that use a seven. One, two, four, five, seven, eight. Now, if we use that, we put a seven here, we put a five here, and then we use the one and the four, and the other digits we use are two and eight. So we would have to put one, four, two, eight in here. This leaves a three, nine here, which does not sum to 11. So we cannot use one, two, four, five, seven, eight. Basically, what we've said is this cannot be a seven. So this is not a seven. This is a five, six. So that cell there becomes blue. Now, there may be other ways that people have found of doing that. This is the way that I had when I set it. This cell becomes green. This cell becomes blue. We now have both a five and a six in this cage. And this is going to be one, four, plus whichever option um, we do not use in here. Okay, so what is next? Um, so the next thing I want to ask is where does five go 
in the I-beam. Well, five can't go there and five can't go in those anymore because we've established the five, six pair. So five now goes in one of those two cells, which puts a little bit of pressure, I think, on this nine, because what can go into this um, 15 cage? Because these have to sum to six. Well, I can't use one five, so the only option left is two, four. So once this is 2, 4, I want to look at this cage. So if this is a 5, this has to be 10. Well, I can use 1, 9. I can't use 2, 8. I can't use 3, 7. And I can't use 4, 6. If this is 6, these have to sum to 9. Well, I can use 1, 8. I can't use 2, 7. I can't use 3, 6. And I can't use 4, 5. So either way, there is a 1 in one of those cells which means, remember these yellows indicated the one? I can no longer put a one here. So this has to be the one. This is not the one. This is the one, and the yellows are resolved. In fact, all of the coloring is now pretty much resolved, so I can get rid of all of it. So that is what you can get. That's kind of the end of the tricky part of the break-in. There's still a fair bit more to do, but um, that's what we end up with. So now I've got to remember what's next because I really honestly don't. Um, so we've got two, four, we've got one in here somewhere. Is there pressure on this? I think there is now that I can't use a one because if this is a five, this has to sum to 10. I can't use one, nine. I can't use two, eight. I can't use three, seven. This would be four, six. If this is six, these sum to nine. I can't use one, eight. I can't use two, seven. I can't use three, six, and I can't use four, five. So this is four, six. This is five. This is six. This is four. This is six. I can take six, um, sorry, four out of there. Well, actually forget that, but I can take four and seven out of those. But the four makes that a two, which makes that a four, which takes four and seven out of those. This becomes three, eight. The most immediate ramification of that is this becomes a seven. But more importantly, it takes three, eight out of those, and this becomes a two, nine. So all of a sudden, we've got that locked in. Two now can't be there. This becomes a two. One can't be there. This becomes a one. And all that's left to go into that slot is a four and we've resolved a lot of this box. This can't be a one or a four anymore. Um, this can't be a one anymore. Uh, in fact, these cells must be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So four and seven must go into those two cells. Um, and I'm trying to remember. Um, so these are now pretty much fixed. Oh, of course, we need to put an eight around this quadruple clue, but this is now a two nine. So that's an eight. This is now the only place left for a one. Uh, this can't be a seven because that's the four. That's the seven. The only thing left in this box is one, two. That's a three. These are three cells that are left over. Oh, sorry, this eight is taking eight out of there, but I'm not sure that's giving me much more yet. These are three cells left over, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Well, I can't put eight up there, so that becomes the eight. Um... um, um, um oh, this six. Makes that a five, makes that a six, makes that a five, makes that a six. The five makes that a three, which makes that a five. Um, doo, doo, doo. Oh, this six means these have to sum to nine. So I can't put a nine in the cage. So this becomes a one and this becomes an eight. Now I look at, I think what can has to still go, well, that five means this is a five. 
and this is not the five, and still left to go in this cage is I've got one, I've got two, I've got three, I need four, six, and nine. I've got four, six there, so this becomes a nine, this becomes a six, this becomes a four, this becomes a nine, and if you will notice, I have completed a large chunk of this section of the grid without actually touching row one, row two, row eight, or row nine at all. But the tricks you needed to use of making these into combined cages um, and then using the quadruples to force these five, six pairs by eliminating totals that were or were not possible in these cages and then the pressure from the sevens and the eights and everything. Discovering this and putting it down was just a lot of fun. So what's left in these rows? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'll be honest with you. At this point, I don't know a solution path beyond this. This is where I just kind of figure it out as I go. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, 18 cage in four. I can't use a one or a two. If I look at the minimums, three, four, five, and six, and add them together, five and six is 11, three and four is seven, seven plus 11, this is three, four, five, and six. So these must be seven and eight. Um, I can't put three or four in the middle, so that's a five, six, so I can take five, six out of those, and I get that resolved to that point. So this is five, six, so down here I need to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So these cells must sum to 11. I can't use nine, two. I can't use eight, three. I can use four, seven. I can't use 5, 6, so this becomes a 4, 7 pair, which is not yet resolved. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, 8, which is also not resolved. Oh, yes, it is. That one is. So that makes that an 8 and that a 2. The 8 looks up making that a 7 and that an 8. The 7 looks down making that a 4 and that a 7. The 4 looks up making that a 3 and that a 4. Okay, um, now, where do I want to look next? Um, I'm not sure which cage is actually under the most pressure. I really don't remember. I don't think any of that is broken yet. So let's look at the 12 cage. So 12 in 3, I can remove any option that doesn't that uses a 3 or a 5. So that leaves me with three options, except I know I must put a one in the cage. So that actually is more effective. So um, that leaves me with one, two, nine, or one, four, seven. Um, so one, so if it's four, one, seven looks okay. Uh, one, two, nine. also looks okay. Let's look at this 12 cage because that would also be under some pressure. I can't use anything that's got a 2 or a 4 in it. So that's 138 or 156. I can't use a 6 in the cage because there's two 6s looking. So this becomes 138. Can't put an 8 there. Uh, so I've now got I can't put three here because three in this box is here. I can't put three here. Three is in this box here. Three has to go up here and there's two threes looking at it. This becomes a three. Um, that gives me... Well, I know three is in this 13 cage, but I'm going to look at this 14 cage now because I can remove anything that uses three, four, or six. So uh, three, four or six. So 158 or 257. So it must have a five in it, and I can't put five in either of those two. So that becomes a five, that becomes a six, that becomes a five. So 
I've actually got a 138 triple in the column, so this has to be 27. The 7 gives me the order. This becomes the 2, this becomes the 7, the 7 makes this the 8, which makes this the 7. The 7 goes down, making this a 9, and this a 7. Um, does that break anything else open? Not really, but in here I need to put one, two, three, four, four, and nine. That one makes that the nine and that the one, which takes one out of here. I've got a three, eight pair. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is a nine, which means this is one and this is nine. The one looks back making this the three, which makes this the eight and this the three, which looks down making this the eight and this becomes the one. This now has to be one, two, three, four, five, and six, which is not yet resolved. Now, over in this 12 cage, well, what I want to do is I really want to put in these triples. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, and eight. So I can't put one in any of those two, so this has to be the one. These now have to sum to 11. Two, nine is possible. Eight, Three is not. So this is two and nine. This is eight. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. And that four is giving me the order. That is six. That is four. The two is looking down, making that nine and that two. This is now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, that is not broken open. One, two, three, four, five. These are six and seven. This seven makes this a six, which makes this a seven, which makes this a five, and this a six, which makes this a two, and this a five. And the last two cells are one, two, three and four, and that completes ironworks. You may have said that 13 cage was not needed, but um, you could use the 13 cage earlier on if you didn't figure out all of the perfect logic in the middle. You could actually use the 13 cage or any of these corner cages to actually put some pressure back into the middle. Um, so I like puzzles with multiple solution paths, so you don't have to find the exact path I put in. Um, but this has been listed as a, some people have called it a very easy puzzle. I, I don't really agree with that. I think some of the deductions in it are quite tricky. Um, I think it is one of the hardest puzzles I have set. Um, but I'm really happy with how this puzzle came together. Um, playing around with the deduction of the cages um, having to see each other like this and using the quadruple clues to apply that extra pressure, particularly around this eye and the the two threes that you can get right at the beginning, um, I was very happy with. Um, I hope you enjoyed the puzzle um, and I hope you don't think I was being too self, I don't know, um, uh, aggrandizing I suppose for um, doing um, just another one of my puzzles and I have no idea why the grid has become offset on my window I really don't know what's happening there but um, sorry about that <laughs> everything has gone wrong this evening um, but I um, really didn't want to do another set as puzzle um, at the same time as I was saying go save the galaxy go do something else so thank you very much for watching um, and all I can say is once again very good luck with your solving.